Hello everyone and welcome back to Mariana Mass Books. My name is Mariana and today I am here with the Tolkien tag. I first saw it on Anne Janet Barr's channel. I love her version of the tag because she does this tag along with her um, teenage son. So she and her son answer the questions and it is really funny to see both their perspectives and um, their dynamic is very fun also. So I am going to link her video down below obviously there are other versions of the tag i think this tag is pretty old and of course i will link the original tag in the description box so i wasn't tagged to do this as i said this is a very old tag i just saw the tag in Anne Janet's channel and of course I wanted to do it especially now that I finished my reread of um, the Lord of the Rings and I have rewatched the movies after I uh, reread every book and also I just finished reading Tolkien's biography and I thought it would be a great tag to film. Okay so the first question says how does your middle earth story begin my middle earth story began in my uh, on my 11th birthday which was december 13th 2001 so the movies hadn't come out yet but the first movie was about to come out but i didn't know this i had never heard of the lord of the rings one of my aunts gifted me the fellowship of the ring and she told me that it was her favorite book when she was my age and that's why she gifted me the book i didn't know anything about it but i knew i loved fantasy but yeah so she gifted me the book and i started reading it right away and i immediately got hooked it was like nothing i had read before i had read fantasy before i had read the first harry potter book i think but this was like nothing i had ever read and i remember what i loved about it was that it felt real as if it had really happened and it i remember loving the fact that i felt like i was reading a history book and not a novel so i fell in love with this idea of feeling like middle earth was real a long time ago and as i said it was december 2001 so the first movie was about to come out so i was reading the the fellowship of the ring and i remember one day my dad showing me an ad in the new newspaper social media and that stuff didn't exist in 2001 so he showed me a, a, a picture in the newspaper of a movie poster for the fellowship of the ring and he was like oh isn't that the book you're reading i think they're um making a movie and when i saw that i got super excited i saw the the release date of the movie and i decided that i wanted to finish the book before i went to see the movie but then weeks passed and I was afraid they were going to stop showing the movie if too much time passed so I went and saw it and I hadn't finished the book but I remember where I was I remember I had just finished reading the chapter of the mirror of Galadriel I had just finished reading that when I went to see the movie and so I went to see the movie absolutely fell in love with it went to see the movie again like I don't know two or three more times in the <laughs> in the theater and um, I just fell in love with Middle Earth I fell in love with Arwen I wanted to be Arwen I do know you as Arwen Undomiel the evening star <laughs> in whose likeness Luthien Tenuviel the nightingale had come again yeah I saw the movie multiple times and then I finished the book and obviously then I read two towers and the return of the king i remember very vividly where i was when i um when i finished reading the return of the king so yeah i finished all of the books i completely got obsessed over the lord of the rings i remember going online and uh, as i said like social media fandoms all of that was not really a thing and i was 12 so I didn't really know all about like the fan websites and stuff so I just remember like going online and looking for whatever I could I remember downloading a Kenya dictionary and saying I wanted to learn Elvish and um, all kinds of nerdy things I just fell in love well then the second and the third movie came out and 
obviously I went to see them multiple times and I just loved and adored everything about the Lord of the Rings and um, oh also it was very fun like after the first movie came out it was kind of like when DVDs started to be a thing and I remember um, one of my aunts she had seen the Lord of the Rings DVD or she had bought it and that you could see behind the scenes um, documentaries and how they made the movie and I remember being really amazed the concept of they filmed the documentary and put it inside a CD never came across my mind I was just amazed at this new technology where you could put in a movie and then watch the past of how that movie was made I think um, that's what made us in my house buy a DVD player because I wanted to buy the Lord of the Rings DVD to watch these documentaries that my aunt was talking about and so we bought a DVD player and the first DVD that we bought was the Lord of the Rings The Fellowship of the Ring and so I watched the movies and then I watched the special features and I am one of those people that has watched the movie and the special features multiple times uh, it's so funny because I am currently reading the Frodo franchise uh, by Christine Thompson which talks about the movies and how they were made and everything and I just read a chapter where she talks about kind of like this moment in um, film and marketing history where making of films started to be a thing and how uh, Peter Jackson asked to, to document everything and they had tons of making of documentaries and etc. After The Lord of the Rings I read The Hobbit and then I tried reading The Silmarillion but I was 12, 13 and um, I think it was too much for me at the time and so I just um, didn't read it so I, I sort of like became a super fan of the movies after I read the, the books because I just wanted more Middle Earth and I didn't know that there was this whole other array of books about it. I do have plans on reading The Silmarillion, you can see it right there, you can see it right there in my bookshelf. Um, and I just, as I said, I just read the uh, Tolkien's biography, I am currently reading it currently reading the further franchise and I have um, several other Tolkien and Tolkien related books on my TBR that I will be reading in the future so my Middle Earth journey is uh, has has begun again. Question two is what is your favorite Middle Earth book? that is easy I, I don't even have to think about it that's the return of the king I just you know if you watched my last video you know that Eomer is my crush um 12 year old me wanted to marry Legolas but 31 almost 32 year old me wants to marry Eomer so the return of the king it's a lot of Eomer Elmer is made king, which I know it's after Theoden dies, so it's sad in that way, but I mean, every time they mention King Elmer, have you seen that gif of like over is exploding? Yes, and whenever he's mentioned alongside King Elessar, I mean, yeah. The Return of the King, favorite book. <laughs> what is your favorite movie? Well, I always said it was The Fellowship of the Ring and I do love The Fellowship because I love Arwen and I love The Fellowship Arwen. Like, I love her the best in that movie. Um, I mean, if you want him, come and claim him. Yes, okay, everyone is familiar. Uh -huh. <laughs> so... The Fellowship of the Ring, I, that was what I always said, but after reading the books for the second time and finding my new husband, Deomer, I... and I, I know I keep saying Eomer, <laughs> and I know Eomer comes up in the two towers, but I am also in love 
with Aragorn and you know his LSR moment <laughs> when he turns into LSR I love that so um, I'm getting off track um, what I meant to say is that I know that Elmer is <laughs> heavily featured in the two towers as well but um, I also love Aragorn and especially I love him once he, he embraces LSR um, so that's why the return of the king now could also be side to side along the fellowship for favorite movie specifically for the last part of the movie i think if we are talking as a whole the fellowship is my favorite but the last part of the return of the king can also be my favorite question four movies or books i am not even going to dignify that question with an answer because it's obviously both and i can't take either of them away you i you heard my story i started by reading the book then i saw the movie movie one and then i finished uh, and book two and book three and then i saw all the movies so they are together i i literally cannot separate one from the other who are your favorite characters i mean i I think you can guess who my favorite characters are. I'm going to say again, Arwen, Eomer, um, Aragorn, <laughs> Faramir. I, I love Faramir too. I love everyone, okay? Don't make me choose. Question six. What Middle Earth race would you be? Well, as 12-year-old <laughs> me would have said elf, no questions asked. 31-year-old me would say realistically i think i would be a hobbit no sense of adventure i'm on board with that quiet life so realistically i would be a hobbit in terms of wishful thinking i'm going to say a human specifically from rohan and i think you can guess why best actor character match okay so this is a hard one because as i said my experience is movies and books hand to hand i i can't separate them so for me i read the first book almost finished the first book went to see the movie so when i read the two towers and um the return of the king the actors were were already in my mind what i will say though is i think we can all agree and don't even try contradicting me in the comments i think we can all agree that Viggo mortensen is argon eight why is your favorite place in middle earth lothlorien i don't even have to think about it like i've always been obsessed with lothlorien what is your favorite quote from the books or movies so it's really hard to choose but i'm going to read you a few of course i'm, I'm I'm not going to read you just one. So from the movies, it's easy. If you want him, come and claim him. I think that's my favorite quote in cinema ever. If you want him, come and claim him. But from the books, I'm going to read you um, a couple of quotes. I, I don't know how many. We'll see how this goes, okay? First, uh, there are different types of quotes I like in the lord of the rings tolkien is a master at description and imagery so some of the quotes that i that i have marked are just because of the beauty of the prose the, the beauty of the descriptions the way he describes places the way he describes people people's voices another type of quote i really like are from the songs and poems that you can find throughout the the, um, the books. I think my favorite is The Fall of Gil-galad. If you are a super nerd, <laughs> super geek, you probably know what it is. If not, you can Google it. I'm not going to read it to you, but that one is the most beautiful to me. The Fall of Gil-galad. Again, I'm not going to read it to you because what I want to read to you is my third type of quote. My third favorite type of quote, which is 
heroic moments. Moments that, that I read and I'm like, oh my god, yes. I, I, I don't know how to put the feeling into words, but I'm going to read you a couple and you know what I mean. I'm going to read you one from um, The Two Towers and two from The Return of the King. Or three from the two towers um the only thing that really saddens me about the movies is the portrayal of faramir if you read the books you know you know what i'm talking about i um in my Jurassic can be books tag i mentioned that i really like watching reaction videos and i have been watching tons of lord of the rings reaction videos of people who see the movies for the first time and at least all of the ones I've seen are people who don't know the books who have never read the book so they're going in without knowing anything when they get to two towers and um <laughs> you know that scene with Faramir um and Sam and Frodo you know the one the ring of power within my grasp it is heartbreaking to see the reactions of like, oh my god, Farmy is the worst, he's worse than his brother, I hate him, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but he's not though, he's not. <sighs> In the Frodo franchise, they have a quote explaining why they did this change, why they changed his character, and it actually makes sense. Like, I actually understand, and I am not mad at them, I don't resent them for it so i'm just going to read you the passage at how it happens i know you know it if you're watching this video um but just in case there's anyone watching who is a fan of the movies and hasn't read the book i want you to know faramir as i know and love him so i'm going to read you that whole passage so this is after Faramir finds out that Frodo has a ring and um, well I think Frodo and Sam and I think we as a reader think oh my god oh no why uh, is he going to want the ring etc and in the movies you know he's like at first oh I want the ring and then he's like no I, I'm come to the realization and you're right go free <laughs> i'm a better person but in the book he like from the very beginning he doesn't want the ring he 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 wants to help them and so this is after they have talked with him and um he he puts frodo and sam to sleep or he talks them into bed so to speak and um Frodo is sleeping and Sam and Faramir have a, a little moment. Faramir stared at him for a moment, him being Frodo. Faramir stared at him for a moment in grave astonishment. Then suddenly he caught him as he swayed and lifting him gently, carried him to the bed and laid him there and covered him warmly. At once he fell into a deep sleep. Another bed was set beside him for his servant. Sam hesitated for a moment, then bowing very low. Good night, Captain, my lord, he said. You took the chance, sir. The I so, said Faramir. Yes, sir, and showed your quality, the very highest. Faramir smiled. A pert servant, Master Samwise, but nay, the praise of the praiseworthy is above all rewards. Yet there was not in this to praise. I had no lure or desire to do other than I have done. Ah, well, sir, said Sam. You said my master had an elvish air, and that was good and true. But I can say this. You have an air too, sir, that reminds me of, well, of Gandalf, of wizards. Maybe, said Faramir, maybe you discern from far away the air of Numenor. Good night. I mean, can we just take a moment? So that's a quote from the two towers. 
now the the <laughs> return of the king. Uh, okay, so this one is from the uh, battle in the Pelennor fields. This is before Aragorn arrives with the army of the dead after Theoden has already died and everything looks hopeless and they think that they have no chance and so Eomer is going to lead the Rohirrim in his mind he thinks he's going to lead them to their dooms but they're going to go out fighting and fighting Mordor and so that's the, that's where this quote is from it says stern now was Eomer's mood and his mind, his mind clear again. He let blow the horns to rally his men to his banner that could come thither, for he thought to make a great shield wall at the last, and stand, and fight there on foot till all fell, and do deeds of song on the fields of Pelennor, though no man should be left in the west to remember the last king of the mark. You see what I mean when I say these heroic quotes. This uh, he he he's going to lead them to do deeds of song on the battles of the field of Pelennor, even though there will be no man to remember the last king of the mark. <laughs> okay, then. Oh my god, this quote. Yes, this is from my favorite chapter. Okay, my fair, my two favorite chapters are The Battle in the Fields of Pelennor and uh, The Houses of Healing. And this is after Aragorn has healed Faramir. He has sort of like used the, the, the herbs on him and Faramir is coming to himself. And it says, Suddenly Faramir steered. And he opened his eyes, and he looked on Aragorn, who bent over him, and light of knowledge and love was kindled in his eyes, and he spoke softly, My lord, you called me, I come, what does the king command? When I tell you, I stopped, closed the book, screamed a little, went back, read the quote again, read the quote again, read the quote again. <laughs> I am not exaggerating. Like it, I was literally reading, read that, and I thought, are you kidding me? I, I actually have a little note next to the, um, next to, to the quote that says, oh my God, no puedo, which means, oh my God, I can't in all caps i can't i can't i just i finished reading a quote and i went over and over and over and over and i read it a thousand times my lord you called me i come what does the king command <laughs> can we please can we please that wraps up this tag i think it's um, enough fangirling, enough gigging out, enough nerding out. I think I have made enough of a fool of myself. Um, and we are going to leave it at that. I know this tag is super old, but I am going to tag David Wiley in case he wants to do it and in case he hasn't done it yet. I am sorry, David, I didn't go back and check. So if you already did it, you know, let me know so I can go watch it. And if you haven't, um, you know, go ahead and do it if you feel like it. And uh, whoever else is a fan of Tolkien, go ahead and do this tag. It was super fun. Thank you for watching. And I will see you again on another bookish video. In the meantime, happy reading. So the, ring, the Lord of the Ring Rates, Lord of the Rings just said, release or get, surrender the halfling, okay? If you want him, come and claim him. <laughs> <laughs>